tea, please. Sabah, Sabahan. These are adverbs formed just like the ones you learned before. Zuhur, Zuharan, Masa, Masaan. The only difference is that they are referring to time. Here's another useful time adverb. Kathir becomes Kathiran, not Kathira. Kathira is an adjective, not an adverb. Another one is based on the word Ada, which means usual or normal. Ada, Adatan. These are the same pronouns we attach to verbs. A simple example is min. Minha, minhu, minna. If the preposition ends with a short vowel like bada, it will still be there. For example, badani. If it ends with a ya, the attached pronouns that start with hu will change to he. So we have fina, fi him, and fi he. One preposition takes a different form when we attach the pronouns to it. Ala. So we have aleha, aleya for ana instead of aleini, it's aleya, alehim. So in this case, it takes the form of ale instead of ala. As I explained earlier, there are two types of plurals in Arabic. Sound plurals only add a suffix, and the basic word remains the same. The masculine endings, una and ina, are really only used for people. The feminine ending, at, is used for people and also for some other nouns. It's a common ending for loan words from other languages. These words don't fit into the root system, so it's difficult to form broken plurals for them. Broken plurals can be used for people or things. There are several different patterns. <clears throat> One loan word that has a broken plural is the English word bank. Since it has three consonants, the plural bunuk can be made from it. It's hard to predict which pattern a broken plural will take for a word, so the best thing to do is simply memorize the singular and plural together. What happens when there are more than two words in an idafa? Safhatu kitabi talibin. This one means a page of a student's book. All the words after the first are genitive, and only the last can have a tenwim kasra. Of course, if the idafa is definite, this will also be a single kasra. Safhatu kitabit talibi.